So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to do chi-squared test of independence or association using Jamuvi software. So assuming that you have um, a research study and having this uh, diagram or schema of your um, the framework of your study, let's say you want to know if um, there is relationship between the variables relationship status and motivation to work. So observe that it contains uh, the relationship status is um, containing categorical variables which are married, single, in relationship, and complicated. While uh, the dependent variable motivation to work is just simply motivated or unmotivated. So basically the chi-squared test of independence is just testing relationship of two categorical variables so if you have if you want to make um, a questionnaire for this so just simply the the participant will just simply check whether they are married single or whatever and uh, for motivation they will just check if it's they are motivated or not so it's like that so these are categorical variable it doesn't involve um, values or numbers just simply words okay so how to uh how to compute the or determine the relationship using the jamuvi software so let's assume that we have already um collected data from respondents and let's go to jamuvi software and let's open our file containing the the data so we go here in the upper left there is like three lines uh, it's a menu and then go to open and then click browse and look for your data so uh, my data is in here chi-squared test sample data for chi-squared test so as you can see these are the participant number actually there are 1000 participants in my data the more uh, participant or, or samples the better and uh, here's the uh, responses for the relationships the participant participant one is uh, married and he is motivated to work while participant two is single and he is unmotivated and that's what that's what we want to know if this relationship status matters in their motivation to do their work so so let's go to frequencies and then um, we go to independent sample so there are two chi squares here chi squared goodness of fit and chi squared test of association so the goodness of fit is uh, just knowing if the um, the uh, one variable is um, having the same um, distribution with whatever is expected so anyway, the in short, the chi-squared goodness of it is just using one variable. Well, the chi-squared for test of independence or association is um, involving two uh, variables. In this case, it's relationship status and motivation to work. So let's go to again to frequencies, independent samples, chi-squared test of association. And then you put the independent variable under rows and the, uh, the dependent variable under columns. Although even if you interchange the two, it's just the same result. But it is still much better if you put the independent variable relationship and the columns in as the dependent variable. So now um, we, if we go to statistics, so we have some options here. Chi-squared, chi-squared continuity correction and so on. So we just simply check the chi-squared and um, there are some um, problems when the, uh, the, the expected values of, of this contingency table is smaller than 5. So these are not expected values. These are just raw var uh, values, which means 
it, the, there are 114 people who are complica having complicated relationship status and and they're still motivated so it's it's just like that but to go uh, to check the expected value we go to sales and check the expected account i mean check uh, the expected counts so let's just uncheck first the observed counts to make it easier to see the values so these are expected values and as you can see these are good values there is um there will be a problem if there is a number which is smaller than five in this expected values so if there is a smaller than five like four three two and or one then you cannot use the chi squared because it the the p value here is a false result so you are going to use uh the chi squared continuity correction or the Fisher's exact test but but it's more accurate to use this because this is uh, like um, an old uh, formula to use when there is um, an expected value smaller than five so we, we can use this again you only use this when there is an expected value smaller than five meaning it's a, it's a low expected value because it will affect the p-value here instead of a significant result it will give you not significant or the vice versa so yeah so though you you don't need this since our expected value are greater than five so let's go back to the observed accounts okay so these are observed accounts the observed are actually the raw raw uh data or the frequency of those um in this in relationship status and the motivation to work and this is the total number of frequency so yeah so it means like for single there are example 116 people who are unmotivated and they are single so what else do we need to check we need to check also the percentages and um the column because we need this percent by column um in presenting it in our table for uh reporting our result in an under ep format so yeah so you may not check the confidence interval you may not uh, necessarily needing it and then the p and kramer's v so these two are actually the strength of the relationship between two variables if there is significant relationship just like this the p the p should be less than 0.05 for it to have for the two variables to have relationship or significant relationship so but this is not telling you how strong the relationship is but these two contingency coefficient and v and kramer's v will be giving you the strength of the relationships let's check this too so you can just you can just choose either of these two now i suggest to use v and um, kramer's v because this is having um fixed range from zero to one so when you interpret the result you can just interpret it like the same as how you interpret a pearson's correlation like for zero to two is weak uh, relationship and two to four uh, no, uh, zero to two is very weak. Um, two to four is weak. Four to six is a uh, moderately strong, and six to eight is um, um, that is a strong relationship, and one is uh, perfect. So I mean, I mean points two, point four, yeah, and so on. So while the contingency coefficient is having um, a flexible maximum value it's not exactly ranging from zero to one it depends on the size of the table so if it's a two by two table may sometimes it's having a range only of z from zero to 0 0.9 if it's more than two by two table sometimes it's beyond one so that's why it's hard to interpret a contingency coefficient that's why we prefer phi and kramer's v so let's uncheck this
now you'll see that um, the fee coefficient is NAN because it's not applicable since uh, the fee is only um, used for a two by two table like two um, va uh, variables here on the relationship ex status ex example if it's only married and single and uh, motivated and unmotivated it's two by two but here it's four by two so it's more than two by two that's why we use um, Kramer's V so the the software will automatically identify which of these two will be used so if it's in only two by two then we don't need a Kramer's V but you need to use the fee coefficient all right so now how do we um, report this because you cannot just simply leave it like this and then just um copy and paste it in in your thesis under chapter four as a result but you have to follow the apa format so let us open let me open the 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 table that i have prepared which is following the apa format and it's actually following already the result of this uh computation so under APA format, so here in the left side, we have the, the Jmovie result. I'm minimizing it to, sh to show both uh, uh, windows. So we have table one uh, and then title. That's how you, you write it under APA format. So table number and then put the title in ita uh, it italic um, uh, style or italicized and then you put the variables name in this case it's relationship status and uh, whatever is in the uh, in this variable and then put the uh the another variable the dependent motivation to work so and then put both uh, or uh it depends on your data how many um how many categories are there in your in your variable in this case it's two it's motivated and unmotivated and then you just simply copy the values uh, the frequency it's 114 and then the percent here in the movie is in decimal in one decimal place you just round it off to two i mean in whole number okay so in in whole percent it's 28.8 so just round it off to 21 percent so sometimes the total will be more than 100 or less than 100 because of rounding off and that's fine that's understandable because you are rounding off so as long as it's um, close to 100 or it's it's best when if it's exactly 100% for this column so adding the percent is by column not in row so that's the reason why we put the dependent variable here in column um, then the result here this is telling you if there's significant relationship or not so the chi squared value you just put it here under note so note make sure it's in italic uh, italic style or italicized then chi squared so every nota notations here are italicized except for those in greek letters already like the chi and uh, here notation uh, which are just simply alphabetical uh, letters are um, italicized except for the word Kramer's just the V the P well um, there are exemptions with the sample size and the degrees of freedom you don't italicize it according to the AP format so we just simply copy all those values from here the chi squared which is 25.3 make it in two decimal places degrees of freedom which is three sample size is 1000 um the p is less than 0 0.001 all right and then the kramer's v by the way is 0.159 or 0.16 it means it's a very weak relationship but even if it's very weak still they have relationship um then we put interpretation um a chi squared test of independence was conducted to examine the association between relationship status and then put parenthesis uh, put inside a parenthesis whatever those in with uh, the categories under relationship status 
and motivation to work again you put inside the parentheses whatever categories under that variable the results of the chi-squared test so uh, by the way we, we use we put d sometimes we we may not put d the most common is only chi-square but it's also correct to say chi squared. For me, I prefer chi squared with a D because, of course, um, if you say x squared, you don't say x squared. It's x squared with D. So both are correct, but I prefer this because it's uh, more grammatically correct than without the D. So the results of the chi squared test indicated a significant. Uh, association between relationship status and motivation to work and then put the chi squared and then parenthesis you put the degrees of freedom here three sample size with an n equal so you put n equals and then sample size so why not just simply 1000 because it might be uh, anyway it's a it's an APA format, but I think the reason why we need to put n equals is it might be misinterpreted as as another degrees of freedom if you don't if you just simply put 1,000 because usually if it's only a number and another number it's a degrees of freedom one and degrees of freedom two so there's a reason why we put n equals but that is already recommended uh, I mean um, the the proper formatting uh, under APA. Um, you put the for for the chi squared, the degrees of freedom and the sample size, and then equals the value of this chi squared, which is 25.30, and then the p value, which is less than 0 0.001, and then you add the Kramer's v, or or if it's a two by two table, it's it's a phi. Kramer's v equals 0 0.16. By the way, if it's a phi, you only put the the symbol phi. So where, where do you get the symbol phi? You can just find it here under symbols or in under equation equation and then you go to Greek letters uh, the one with the circle and the line this one it's a fee so so that's a fee or in the symbol you can find it there or you if you want you can just find it in Google the fee symbol and put it there it's automatically italicized so the Kramer's V is 0.16 that's the strength of the relationship so if it's not significant then it uh, the Kramer's v is unnecessary because it just means equals to zero because there's no relationship so specifically and then you just um uh, add some more information about the descriptives so married people were more likely motivated than people with other relationship status so how do i know that so just look at the motivated and the highest percent is the married it's 31 percent so then you can just say that married people were more likely motivated and you can just you can also add that the uh, more unmotivated is those uh, in relationship so I don't know of course these are just fictitious data uh, <laughs> although it won't make sense in in relationship and they are unmotivated to work so yeah these are just fictitious data just I just randomly put the the data in the excel file but in the actual so we don't know what's the the real result if it's an actual survey so but anyway this is how you um write it in an apa format for the table of a chi-squared test where you put here the uh we call it the contingency table it's the frequency composite frequencies you don't need to put the totals and like here in the gym movie it's giving the total so you just need to remove that because anyway you will know the total population I mean the sample size it's here it's n and then the result of the chi-squared test you don't need to add another table because that will be a, an additional table so you just put here and under the note the results a chi-squared degrees of freedom sample size and the strength of relationship which is the Kramer's V and then P is less than 0 0.001 so again the Kramer's V we only use that if it's not um, a 2 by 2 table but anyway in under gym movie it will automatically identify whether you use V or the Kramer's V so that's all for this
video. I hope you have learned something from this.